Thank you, Karen. And I got my cup. Okay, we are going to do today, everybody at your table has a salmon expert. Somebody who read with me today about salmon and who will be able to tell you the information you need to know about salmon. The first question, don't do heads together yet, hold on. They are going to tell you what class of animal the salmon belongs to. Ready? Heads together. Okay. One, two, three, eyes on me. Red, number three. Bony fish. It's a bony fish. Yeah, there's some fish that don't have what we consider bones. They might have cartilage like sharks. They are bony fish. Okay, the next question for your group is what is the habitat of the sockeye salmon? Ready? Get it together. And streams migrate to oceans. Okay, you say. Where they one, two, three, eyes on me. Blue, number four. They live in streams. And we want a little bit more information, too, about where they live. Let's see. Purple, number four. Okay, they live in streams and oceans. And what biome do we find them in? It's something we've been studying. Ready? Heads together. Ocean. Okay, one, two, three, eyes on me. Green, number two. Rivers. Well, rivers is one of the biomes. Also, I'm going to go ahead and just put it up here. We've been doing temperate forests. Remember, these are all temperate forest animals we've been doing. Okay, we've been studying. So, rivers, you're right. Also, we want to put up here, they've been in temperate forests, northwest temperate forests. Okay, our next question is, what is a sockeye salmon's food source? What does it eat? Heads together. Zooplankton and insects. Zooplankton and insects. Okay, go ahead. Ready? Black, number four again. Insects. They eat insects, and what else? They're zooplankton. Zooplankton. Mm -hmm. Okay, our next question. Why are sockeye salmon threatened or endangered? Ready? Heads together. What is it again? It's like that. The baby is stuck in the vision. The vision. The vision. I'll say that. Hey, one, two, three. Eyes on me. Green. Number two. Green, number two. Erosion. Erosion. Right, because of erosion. And we also want to talk about what causes that erosion. 
And then what does that erosion do? Ready? Heads together. Where are we? I don't know. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. And the mood. One, two, three, eyes on me. Yellow, number one. Right, the soil from the ero erosion from when they log or mine, it covers the gravel where they lay their eggs in the streams. Good. Next question. Why are salmon important to the forest? Ready? Heads together. The river, no, the ocean, the streams, and the rivers. Ocean, stream, and the river. Yes. If you want me. One, two, three. Eyes on me. Purple, number two. Also bring, the also bring the from the ocean to the river. What does it do? It brings the nutrients. nutrients. Okay, they bring nutrients. Okay, and they have another importance beside bringing nutrients from the ocean to the river. Talk to your group about that. Ready? Heads together. What is it? I think it's that one. No. Interesting facts. Interesting facts. Nutrition from the ocean. Nutrition from the ocean. Nutrition from the ocean. Hey, one, two, three. Eyes on me. Orange. Number three. interesting that we can put down here. Okay, that's good information, but we're looking for, let's do heads together again at your table for what, why else are they important to the forest? Jonathan, help your group out with that, okay? What animals eat the salmon? Bears, um, bears and long birds of prey. Right, bears and birds of prey in the forest often eat the salmon, so they're also important. They depend on the salmon as a food source. Okay, our last question, and there's more than one answer to this. You're going to tell 
what is something, an interesting fact, something else interesting about the salmon. Ready? Heads together. Okay, one, two, three, eyes on me. Red, shh, number one. What is an interesting fact about the salmon? The salmon travels thousands of miles. They do, they travel thousands of miles from where they're born out to the ocean and back. And I think we are done now with our process grid. So what we're going to do next is we are going to do two chants, two of our forest chants. And when you hear the signal word, interdependence, you will walk up to the chant. Okay? And I have super scientist awards for some of the people that I see doing a really good job while we're doing our chants. People who are solving problems, making good decisions, and showing respect. Ready? Interdependence. And remember not to go too fast on this song. Sometimes we're so used to the beginning part that we go a little fast. One, two, three. Habitat, habitat, have to have a habitat. Habitat, habitat, have to have a habitat. Habitat, habitat, have to have a habitat. Have to have a habitat to carry on. Well, the forest is a habitat, a very special habitat. It's where the tallest trees are at. It's where a bear can scratch her back. It keeps the earth from rolling back, prevents erosion, that's a fact. The forest is a habitat we depend on. Habitat, habitat, have to have a habitat. Habitat, habitat, have to have a habitat. Habitat, habitat, have to have a habitat. Have to have a habitat to carry on. Well, the tree is a habitat, a very special habitat. The roots are where the bulls are at. Bark means the fungi, that's a fact. When it dies, it's still a home, a place that insects call their own. The tree is a habitat we depend on. Habitat, habitat, have to have a habitat. Habitat, habitat, have to have a habitat. Habitat, habitat, have to have a habitat. Have to have a habitat to carry on. Good job, you guys. When you hear the signal word, we will walk to the next chant. Ready? Interdependence. And would you please hand it to a girl who's raising her hand quietly? One, two, three, faster than me. And I wanted to give a super scientist award to Luis because he was over there, and I know that his reading group came to get him, but he very quietly solved that problem of quietly letting them know and going back and singing again. Thanks, Luis. <laughs> Okay, one, two, three. I can smell tree, T-R-E-E. -E. I can smell snare, S-N-A-G. I can smell home, H-O-M-E. But I can spell interdependence. I can spell soil, S-O-I-L. I can spell rain, R-A-I-N. I can spell food. But I can't spell interdependence. I can't 
nice job. I really liked I could hear Alex singing the whole time. Good job, Alex. Okay, please go back to your seats quietly. Each of you is going to write. I like how Alex is paying attention. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Yalitza. Okay, your team is going to write a sentence about sockeye salmon. Shh. And we're waiting for Araceli and Jose Luis to be listening. Okay. I will give the paper to the person at the table who is going to write it. But that doesn't mean they're the only person who's going to make up the ideas. They just have to write it down. Okay. And then in about five minutes, we're going to come together and look at our paragraph, our sentences together. Oh, let's see. Jorge, your group is going to write about what animal, you're going to write a sentence to let the readers know what animal we're writing about, okay? Gabriela, your table group is going to tell what class the sockeye salmon belongs to, what class of animals, okay? Alicia, your table group is going to write about one of the habitats of the sockeye salmon. Okay? Alfonso, your table is going to write about what the sockeye salmon eats. Okay? Alex, your table is going to write about why one reason sockeye salmon are endangered. And Araceli, your table group is going to write about why sockeye salmon are important to the forest. And here, Yalitza, your table group will write an interesting fact. Okay, so you need to help the person at your table group come up with a sentence. What can we write?
mira, dame esto. Pon una N ahí y luego pon una, una flechita. Ahí está. Okay, I need your sentence on the count of ten if you haven't finished it. One, two, three, four, five. Seven. Jasmine, how's it coming? It's the same. It's the same one. Okay. Araceli? You don't have one written yet? Okay. Just write it on that side and then bring it up. Hey. Boys and girls, when you hear the signal word, I need you to come and sit right up here. We need to make kind of a little circle. Ready? Oh, I didn't say the signal word yet. That's okay. Interdependence. Sit up, please. Okay, waiting for Araceli's table and Yelitsa's table. check for capitals and periods. Are they where they need to be? But we're also going to edit to see if it sounds right. Okay? Make sure it sounds right. So our first sentence says, this is our topic sentence, and I indent it a little bit, just like in Spanish when we put a sanguión. Okay? When you start a, a paragraph, you put an indentation. It says, we are learning about sockeye salmon. Does that sound right? Yes. It, does, it, is, it is right. Now, are, do we have capital where we need a capital? Yes. And a period where we need a period? Yes. Okay, good. Next. Sockeye salmon are bony fish. Okay, so that's telling about the class of the fish. Does that sound right? Yes. And do we have a capital where we need one? Yes. And a period where we need one? Yes. Does anybody see any extra capitals up there? Raise your hand if you see some extra capitals. Oh, 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 Luis? <coughs> I'm sorry? Andrew? The K. Oh, the K, right. I know. Some of that is just we forget when we're writing and use big letters instead of little letters. Also, Okay. You know, I'm wondering if it's because if it's in the name of a species of an animal, maybe we can have capitals. I'm not sure. Okay, the next sentence. The sockeye salmon travel thousands of miles. Jonathan? I used to say travels. The sockeye salmon travels thousands of miles. Well, actually, this is okay, but the way you're saying it, if you're talking about one salmon, you could say the sockeye salmon travels, if it's one salmon. But if it's also more, more than one, you would say as a group, the sockeye salmon travel. That sounds okay. Okay? Um, we have a capital, right? Yeah. And a period. The K. There's a, the, the K. There's a capital. The K. Okay. So we'd want to make that a lowercase. Okay? Now... Because of erosion caused by mining. Well, I see we have a capital and a period, and we have some good information here. Does it sound right? No. Raise your hand if you have another way you think we could say it. So it would sound like a complete sentence. Uh. Alex, what was your group supposed to tell? Yeah. Okay, you were supposed to tell why they are... Why they are endangered. Okay, so do you think you could put that in, it, in here to make it sound like a complete sentence? This is a good answer because of erosion caused by mining, but we want a complete sentence. 
So they are. They are in, in danger. Okay, they are endangered because of erosion caused by mining and logging. Good. Okay. And so what happens to this B right here? It's small. Okay, we need a lowercase, a smaller b, because it's now the middle of our sentence. All right. The sockeye salmon eats zooplankton. That sound right? No. There's a the K. The K. Okay. okay, now, but we're just looking right now to see does it sound right. The sockeye salmon eats. If it was one sockeye salmon, it eats. But if it's many sockeye salmon, they eat. Okay. So the sockeye salmon eats zooplankton. I bet there's some on the back and insects, and they've got their period right there. Good job. Okay. So you would make this a lowercase s. Okay. And the sockeye. And the K. Okay. And the other one is All right. The Our zooplankton. zooplankton? Oh, we have a big K there. All right. And the back. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. The sockeye salmon lives in the rivers. Yes. Gabriela? Sockeye salmon live in the rivers. Okay, the sockeye salmon live in the rivers. Okay, because it's more than one salmon. And we're waiting for our last group. Did they have their sentence finished? You know, I think we're going to have to just stick with these six sentences. Okay. Okay. Since we don't have um, our last sentence yet, let's think of one as a group. I'm going to grab a paper. What would be a good way to end our paragraph about salmon? Who could think of a good way to end our paragraph about salmon? I like to study salmon. Okay, we could say, I like to, to study salmon. I love salmon. I love salmon. I like to eat the salmon. <laughs> to eat the salmon, okay. Salmon are very important to us. Ah, salmon are very important to us. Okay, how about, does that sound like a good one to end with? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Salmon are very important to us. Good job, you guys. Okay, let's read together what we have written. They are done. Okay, well, we will have to look at that. Let's see. We can squeeze this in, I guess. The salmons are important to the forest because it gives... Okay. Okay, we'll stick that one right in here. Okay, so let's read together. Ready? We are learning about sockeye salmon. Sockeye salmon are bony fish. The sockeye salmon travels thousands of miles. They are endangered because of erosion caused by mining. The sockeye salmon eat zooplankton. The sockeye salmon live in the rivers. The salmon are important to let's see, the forest because it gives nutrients to the ocean and rivers. And salmon are very important to us. So we you guys. Did we check yours? No, hon, because we, we kind of ran out of time to check yours, but I did put it in there, and we could look at it later, okay? Okay, so when I say the signal word, please head back to your seat. Ready? Interdependence. I'm not ready.